Afternoon folks, another day living the dream. Um, been doing combines again all day. <laughs> it's Friday as well today, I had a day off to do some stuff. I've got a, supposed to be going to the Isle of Wight next weekend to take some combine bits. Uh, somebody somebody wants some a couple of bits off a of glean, a couple of really back the back hood somebody wants and a couple of other uh, one other bit. And uh, so I've been doing that all day, taking the sieves for the gleaner sea to get repaired because we can't get them anywhere. We phoned up a place called Combine Fabs and they're gonna they're gonna remake them for us. You know, and the bloke knows what he's doing. He used to work for sieve services. Uh, yeah, it's expensive, but I know he's gonna do a good job, and that's all the difference, you know. If we go, we could go hunting the country trying to find second-hand sieves, and just end up with the same shitty sieves. Well, and me, I swear. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, so now I'm working on the um, I'm back. I've been out pretty much all day. I'm back just in the afternoon now. And uh, just going to take this uh, this um, New Holland to a, a young farmer's do tomorrow, just down the road at a place called Ditchley. Um, and it's had a bit of a starting issue. And uh, I was just looking through it clean the battery terminals you know the bloke when I bought it he put a new he put a, he put a refurbished uh, starter motor on it to see if that was it and and it's funny because sometimes it started sometimes it wouldn't so it was something intermittent it was something that was and in the sense it makes sense because I was thinking it's got to be that switch and it has got to be because because it's different each time it's touching in a different place and watch if you see this look it's hard to see it in there if you look in the light there's that there's these connectors here. You got this little short one at the bottom here. Look, just there, that short one, and these two slightly longer ones here. And it, what I noticed is this short one at the end here has been getting hot. And when it's touching, it's touching in different places each time. So that's what's causing it. And you can see, and I. That, that's the switch that goes on the, on the control panel basically, like the steering column. You put the, you put the key in and, it, and you got power and then you push that in and it starts it. And, um, and I was pretty sure it was that but I couldn't prove it and I've just seen that and I still haven't proved it as such but I'm pretty sure it's that. And I'll tell you what I did do that basically proved it is that I, got, I override the switch, I undid the two wires and put them together. And um, this is basically a mechanical relay. Because a lot of switches you have on a modern machine, you switch it and it switches a relay further down the line. And that relay has, has the main power that goes to the, the whatever it is you're powering. You know, the, the, the actuator for the fan speed or whatever, you know, the, the concave adjuster. Not on this, admittedly, but on the modern machine. Um, and this is basically just a mechanical relay. Uh, good idea. I, <laughs> they need more of this stuff on the modern kit. Because you know why they don't put it on a modern kit? Because it ain't a lot of pissing about and you can do it yourself. And they don't want you to do it yourself. They want you to come and pay them to do it. Such is the beautiful world we live in. But I'll leave that one with you anyway. I don't want to get too political. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll possibly add some more to it. I'm going to drive it down to Ditchley in a minute, hopefully. Going to run it up first as well. Run it up in gear, because the bloke I bought it, I've said, you've got a flat belt coming down from the engine to the pressure. Uh, and then you've got another belt on the same pulley that drives the, drives the transmission. But that flat belt that drives the thresher, it sits on the engine pulley. And apparently, over time, it sort of shrinks a bit over time. And if you don't sort of engage it before you go for a long drive, it can sort of wear out the it wears the belt a bit because it's just sat on top of it and it's if it's a if you put it in gear it sort of stretches it up a bit and sort of frees it off so yeah anyway i'll um possibly add some more to this in a little while i'll catch up with you in a bit bye
closing. But then someone come in, someone come in.
that's how far they've come. <laughs> I suppose you all know, you've all seen them, but that's, let me think, 50 something years of progress, 50, nearly 55 years of progress from what I've been driving today to, to now. And you think, 150 years ago, everybody was cutting the fields with knives, basically everybody. Um, sitting 150 years from a knife that we've now got, we now got one of them. When you think before that 150 years ago, thousands of years people were cutting with knives and nothing changed, it was always basically the same. And then in the last 150 years, everything has changed to the point that we can't exist without these things. We couldn't go back to using knives now. We wouldn't know what to do. So we rely on these now. <laughs> it's just the way, it's, well, the way it is. But there you go. <laughs> Lovely. I used to work on the, well, the earlier CRs. They're a good combine sometimes. Um, when they're working, they're really good anyway. They're really comfortable to drive. Really nice, really nice cab, really nice sort of feel. You drive them and you don't, sometimes if you drive certain combines, it, you, it makes you tired just after a while, but these have got a really good, they've got the balance of comfort right, and that is one thing. I love the older combines. I, you know that, they're just great. But the modern comfort aspect is good. That's the one thing, if I, was, if I could modify a modern combine, I'd get rid of a lot of the electrics a lot of that sort of stuff that I feel is unnecessary compute all that stuff I just don't I just don't see it necessary but the comfort I keep that definitely um, yeah so I'll leave that one with you another one it's a class Lexus 600 so a few years old now actually I would say probably getting on 10 years old these now yeah so I'll just show you this Yeah, I think about eight years ago, these were the biggest combine in the world. They always say that, don't they? But, um, yeah, I think it was definitely up there. And I think what, um, I think New Holland ended up getting the Guinness Book of Records thing. That's what yeah, they go for as the standard, you know? Um, the New Holland 
I think it's a ten, uh, CR ten ninety got the got the um, most crop most grain harvested in a set period of time, I suppose. But yeah, and that's what basically knocked this off the top spot. But now you got the Lexan eight thousand nine hundred, I think, which is basically is yeah, no, it's the moving on from this. Um, yeah, what the difference is, I don't know, but I suppose they're bigger, better, more electronics, <laughs> more money. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> there you go. I'll leave. I'll leave this beauty with you. Six hundred Terra Track. Got the end of a nice day. It's been a really good day today. Had a laugh. Yeah, a little break from the the constantly trying to <laughs> get that Model C working. Just a bit of a break. I, I wasn't going to stay all day here, but I decided to just chill out, you know, I need a break. So yeah, it's been, yeah, it's been pretty cool, you know, it's been nice and hot, a bit sunburnt, but yeah. So just to wrap the video up a bit, notice this look, got to change these links to put another bar on there at some point. Uh, so yeah, very good. So we're going to drive it home and that'll be about it for the day then. So we'll wrap it up and I'll, I'll see you again about a week, I suppose. Yeah, I'll see you again soon. Bye.